that uh, that Jews and Christians are kafir. So, uh, like, uh, what's the origin? Like, w from where they originated? Because they claim that they follow the Bible and the scripture. So, how did they become kafir? And what's the origin? And the origin lies like, in, uh, in, how are they in called simply verse number sixty-four. Chapter number three, the Almighty Allah says, commanding Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Al-Kitabi-Ta'ala-U-Ila-Kalimatin-Sawa-In-Bainana-Wa-Bainakum, فَإِن تَوَلَّوْا فَقُولُوا اشْهَدُوا بِأَنَّا مُسْلِمُونَ What does it mean? Allah commands Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu You are my final messenger. Tell the people of the book. Who are the people of the book? يعني the people whom Allah sent to the messengers and revealed books to their messengers. Have they altered and changed their books? Yes, definitely. That's why he sent after Moses, Jesus, in order to revive the religion, in order to bring monotheism back to the Israelites. And when the people, the followers of Jesus, peace be upon him, 500 years later, now they started worshiping Jesus himself, and they started worshiping other than the Almighty Allah, the Almighty Allah, as in the Hadith, the Prophet said, In Allah another ila ahli al ardi famakatahum arabahum wa jamahum illa baqaya min ahli al kitab. So after screening the uh, our earth planet, all the human beings living on earth, those people of the book, after they have changed the original doctrine which Allah revealed to them in the gospel and in the Torah. Allah disliked them all except some of the remnants of the people of the book, those who maintained monotheism, such as Waraqa ibn Nawfal, Zayd ibn Amr ibn Nufayl, and others. Otherwise, they have changed their faith, their religion. And that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent to them Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he told him what I quoted in ayah 64, chapter number 3. Tell the people of the book, you and I, why don't we follow the original message? Kalimatin sawa, a just and equitable statement. What is the equitable statement? Let's all say, we believe in one God. La ilaha illallah. None have the right to be worshipped but, but Allah, the Almighty Allah. If they agree, and this is what I say in churches and synagogues when I attend interfaith dialogues in Europe, in the USA, and I speak to people. So a Christian woman stood up and she said, I am monotheistic. We are monotheistic. I said, name God. When you say, oh my God, whom do you mean? She said, God is the Father, the Holy Spirit, the Son. I said, mom, you just counted three. She said, there are three in one. They all mean one. I said, to me, it's impossible to comprehend when you say one, two, three. That means one. These are three. Even if you think they are one. So she said, what is monotheism? I said to say, there is only one God. None have the right to be worshipped by him. And this God begets not, nor was he begotten. No one is comparable to him. And he preserves and maintains for himself exclusively the most beautiful traits, divine traits. Doesn't eat, doesn't drink, doesn't sleep. He's a sustainer, he's a, the provider, he's the omnipotent, he's the old seer, he's the old hearer. He's not like the humans. We cannot draw images of God. We cannot carve statues in, in the image of God and say that, that resembles God. That is called monotheism. Got it? So people change. Like, why are we talking about the people of the book? Habibi, Muslims. We have two billion Muslims or more. Are they all Muslims actually? Are they all Muslims? That is something to be discussed. 